Hey everyone, let's discuss if probiotics can improve cognition and potentially even reduce or prevent brain atrophy. And of course, this is an important topic because everyone wants to maintain the sharpest cognition possible, especially as we age. Now, before we delve into the findings specifically, let's just frame what might be the best model through which to examine cognitive decline. And this would be Alzheimer's disease because it's a progressive degeneration of memory amidst other facets of cognition. It's not to overly pathologize cognition, but a model that's pathology-based can help us understand the curve of the disease and therefore what we can do to prevent the disease. And what you'll see here, healthy elderly, and we could also even extrapolate that or clarify that since kind of impairment starts in, or starts in adulthood, not necessarily when you're elderly, it can start anywhere from adulthood into being elderly, we could frame this as being a healthy middle-aged or elderly person who then can progress to the next step, which is this SCD, subjective cognitive decline, meaning you're able to notice something doesn't seem quite right, right? There might be word search. You may forget things that you normally don't forget. I mean, sure, we're all human and we're gonna have some days that are sharper than others, but this would be something that feels more noticeably off in your cognition. This is kind of the step one of the arch, which is the SCD. And then that progresses further to early MCI or early mild cognitive impairment to then late MCI and eventually to Alzheimer's disease. Now, this begs the question, can probiotics help with this? And this one study suggests yes via its findings. And before we outline those findings, I wanted to just provide some mechanisms in terms of what could be happening when we either eat probiotic rich foods or as in this study supplement with probiotics that's impacting the gut that's then positively impacting the brain now some of you who have had the misfortune as i have had to have digestive symptoms may notice a fairly tight correlation between as your digestion fares so does your cognition or your mood but it's important to frame this nonetheless now, one of the ways through which the gut connects to the brain is through attenuation or bolstering of the immune system. And this isn't highly speculative. There are randomized control trials that have looked at probiotic supplementation and their ability to reduce seasonal allergy to help with the reduction of food allergy or food reactivity, mainly in the model of lactose intolerance also other studies showing the ability to reduce atopic dermatitis, conjunctive rhinusitis, and even interestingly to the bolstering effect on the immune system, an ability to reduce the frequency and severity of URTI's upper respiratory tract infections. So certainly probiotics have an ability to help balance bolster the immune system. This ties in with the next point, which is to reduce inflammation. One of the ways through which the immune system exerts its cleaning function, if you will, is through inflammation and through inflammatory signaling cytokines. And there are various studies that have demonstrated either the ability to balance a cytokine profile or reduce the cytokines that are predominantly pro-inflammatory. And although a paucity here, there are a few well-performed trials that have found that probiotic supplementation or consumption of probiotic rich foods can reduce leaky gut, usually as assessed by a marker called zonulin. And the leaky gut piece logically then leads to the next finding, which a handful of clinical trials have also supported, which is the ability to improve nutrients. Sometimes this is assessed through looking at certain vitamins like B vitamins, or one study that found better muscle outcomes when using whey protein plus a probiotic as compared to supplementing with just whey protein alone. And the final point here, perhaps a touch more speculative, but important to note that there is this connection between the gut, the liver, and the brain, mainly in this model of what's known as hepatic encephalopathy. And this is where the liver is essentially dysfunctional or cannot adequately filter the contents 
or the toxins that it normally should. These toxins accrue in the blood. As they accrue in the blood, they eventually cross the blood-brain barrier and they can lead to cognitive impairment. Now, interestingly, both antibiotics, namely but not exclusively rifaximin, has been shown, and this is a gut-directed antibiotic, has been shown to attenuate this condition, as have a few trials with supplementation of probiotics. And this is likely because the contents of the gut are filtered by the liver, and the liver also filters the blood. So if there is an issue in the GI, this can burden the liver. And this is likely why other evidence has found that supplementing with probiotics, and this is meta-analysis level data, can actually improve what's known as non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So all these mechanisms to some extent are probably at play leading to this observation from the study I wanted to share with you entitled Effective Probiotic Bifidobacterium Breve in Improving Cognitive Function and Preventing Brain Atrophy in Older Patients with Suspected Mild Cognitive Impairment. This was a 24-week randomized placebo-controlled double-blinded trial. So definitely a very high-quality data point. And they took 115 older patients with suspected MCI, and they were randomized to placebo or the probiotic group. This is really important because the effect of placebo is substantial. And those with worse cognitive function saw a correlation with having more dysbiosis or imbalance in the gut bacteria, which in this study was loosely defined as having a lower level of bifidobacterium. And after six months, when compared to the placebo, again, this is really important, there was an improvement in cognition, or at least the submarker of cognition, orientation. However, there was no significant difference in what's known as the mini mental status exam score, a score of cognition. So some positive findings regarding orientation, no findings or benefit on the cognitive test. However, the next point is really interesting. There was a halting of progression of brain atrophy as based upon an MRI. And after the intervention, even though at baseline there was a difference in bifidobacterium score and after the intervention we see a reduction or a halting of brain atrophy, the microbiota didn't change, the bifidobacterium scores didn't seem to increase. So I'll tell you what that means in a moment, but we don't always have good data to suggest that if you're low on a stool test in a certain bacteria, that supplementing that bacteria is necessarily the way to go. Uh, but uh, again, more here on that to follow in a moment. The thing I wanted to point out first, which kind of hopefully ties us all together because the overuse and incorrect use of testing is a real problem that needs to be called out and needs to be corrected. Another meta-analysis, or I should say a meta-analysis, and remember, a meta-analysis is a summary of clinical trials, did not find any correlation between dysbiosis and mild cognitive impairment. So what this tells us is you should not be relying on a stool test to tell you if a supplement of a probiotic will improve your cognition. Because this study found without any testing guided intervention, there was still an improvement, meaning the test results didn't matter. People responded to the therapy irrespective. And this is even further yet exemplified by the fact that a additional meta-analysis looking at eight studies with 174 Alzheimer's patients and 446 mild cognitive impairment patients found that probiotics improved cognitive function. Yet they did not do this in a way that said, well, only the people with certain stool test results will receive the therapy. And again, why this is so important is we don't want to limit the use of your probiotics based upon your stool test. So said as simply as possible, stool testing is not predictive of response to probiotics. 
So don't worry about the stool test results, just personalize the interventions to you as an individual. If you have or suspect MCI, a trial on probiotics is a good idea. At least it's justifiable. Putting in test results or spending hundreds of dollars on a test is not necessary. And to quote the conclusion of this meta-analysis, again, meta-analyses are really the highest level of data that we have. The researchers commented, our findings suggest that dietary supplementation with probiotics improves cognitive function, especially in those with mild cognitive impairment. Now, one other thing I want to point out. So, we, so far we've established that there's a few mechanisms through which probiotics can improve brain health. We've established that testing does not seem to correlate or predict if you will respond to a probiotic, that there is evidence showing that probiotics can improve cognition and or reduce or halt brain atrophy. This begs the question, well, what is the best probiotic? Because you will invariably be hit with claims on the internet, this is the best probiotic for cognition, this is the best probiotic for memory, what have you. And I want to point to the results from that meta-analysis. Remember, this summarizes various clinical trials. And what I'll put up here on the screen is just a summary of what probiotics were used in each one of the individual clinical trials that this meta-analysis summarized. And what you see on the first slide here, there are four different trials and four different probiotic blends were used. And in the second four trials, you're seeing three different probiotics were used and then one was actually a food source supplement. So what this tells us is we seem to be able to obtain the benefit from probiotics on cognition with different formulas. This should be helpful in the sense that you don't have to worry about a uber specific formula or expensive formula to obtain some of the kind of benefits. So what probiotic is best? Well, these studies predominantly used either one or a blend of either lactobacillus species or bifidobacterium species. So I would look simply for something of that type. Now, any probiotic is better than none. A quality probiotic is better than any probiotic, meaning they follow what's known as GMP, good manufacturing practices, and also hopefully they do third-party independent testing to ensure their label claims actually match what's in the probiotic. And then this is our speculation, at least from what we're seeing in the clinic. If we combined three different formulas into what we term triple therapy probiotic, this seems to be better than one. Um, but in any case, if you are suspecting you're in that SCD phase, that subjective cognitive decline phase, or you've noticed that you have issues with memory or even mood, then a trial on probiotics for a couple months as the 24-week intervention in this clinical trial used is worthwhile. And reevaluate after a couple months and see if you notice benefit. And again, one simple, safe, and fairly inexpensive intervention you can use to improve your brain health.